Hey, our friends. Our collab is a monthly Zoomcast with Sarah Matthews and Natalie Callback. Each episode, we collaborate and chat about all stuff art related and topics that go way beyond that, too. So let's see what we discussed today. start with making this here and talk about what's new uh, in our studios. Um, you can connect with Sarah at those uh, places here on Instagram. I mm -hmm. am sarahmatthews.com is her website and Instagram is I am Sarah Matthews as well. And she has a brand new online shop. But Sarah, what's new in your in your studio right now? So I am a guest teacher for Wanderlust 2022. I'm um, along with, um, I believe it's about 40 other, I, I didn't count how many people are on this, <laughs> on this picture, but 40 other teachers as well. And I'm just glad to be in a number with them because some of them are like, to me, rock stars. Um, but there will be uh, 57 mixed media lessons, all downloadable and yours to keep forever. And plus you'll have handouts, creative community, and a whole bunch of bonuses, which are available to you as soon as you sign up. Um, and we'll put that link in uh, the chat so you have access to it. And it's my affiliate link. So when you click on it and you buy something, I get a little kickback, which is awesome. Yay. And Yay. then there's something else, right? Yes. So I have a few pieces at the Studio Gallery in DC. Um, it's the Studio Gallery Fellow Show. Um, so me, along with three other folks that are fellows of the studio, um, have our pieces up until September 25th. And it's an amazing show. I got to see it last week. And we're going to do a closing reception on September 24th. And look at that amazing dress that you're wearing too. Thank you. And the, the thing is, as I was in, when I was at the the, the beginning um, reception on Friday, people knew which work was mine based on what I was wearing. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's you. You you look like your your work. I like. That's so uh, fun. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> So um, you can connect with me on nataliestudio.com or <laughs> on Instagram uh, at netcallback and also uh, join my Facebook group if you want uh, Nat's Creative Foot. Um, what's new with me? Um, play dates with Kim are back. I'm so excited. Um, we used to do this every month and then during the pandemic, we weren't able to do it. Um, so we did two in the last two months. Uh, we did a four cactus rock garden, which was like super fun using some of uh, my rubber stamps. And then we did some um, city scenes votive ca candles using uh, my foam stamps. So you can check it out. There are tutorials on the website. And then I just wanted to say the next Spill Your Heart episode coming September 24th. I'm talking with uh, some super amazing artists, Mario Robinson, Natalia Korova, and Rian Svirad, which I interviewed during the pandemic um, in my series, Artist in Residence. And I wanted to know where they are now. Mario did uh, like this amazing, um, crazy, huge watercolor that he started back then. And I hope he will show us what what happened to that. And also Natalia and Rian did some really, really cool stuff. So I'm super excited to see them. Um, and you, I think you will love their art a lot as well. So, but here we are back to school. Back to school. And, uh, so we were talking about that, Sarah, right? Because, um, the thought was that if you are um, a teacher, like a mixed media teacher or whatever, like a not teacher, you don't do a lot of classes, but sometimes you do. And it's very, very important to take classes yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, why, Sarah? Why? But why? <laughs> 
Well, I feel like taking classes, I don't know. It feel like it's, it's like a vacation as being a teacher. Like you don't have to worry about any of the things, any of the Zoom things, any of the, like the checking on people where you just focus on yourself. I feel like I, as I'm going through that process, I'm thinking of myself as a student, putting it myself in the student's shoes and it helps me be a better teacher. Um, and then also whatever I'm learning, like I feel like I am a career student. So I'm always like drawn to being cur curious and figuring out something new. Like, so <clears throat> for me, I just love, you know, and I got to get back in the habit. I used to go like, do something every month, but um, I really got to get back in the habit of doing that. It's just spending time with myself. I think joining those classes is like spending time with myself. So. Yeah, and I think there's like also this connection that you have if you do something that's like totally new and you're, you're learning something new, but you also think about like, how can I connect that with what I do, like with my style? So it's not necessarily about learning new, uh, learning something so that you to teach it as well. It's more like, oh, I have, and sometimes I do things that I can't do at home. Like I did like some printmaking uh, workshops I used to do a lot of them where you need a printmaking uh, press um, mm -hmm. but it was more about like how can I uh, with the tools that I have at home how can I you know facilitate that or you know uh, some of my stems were like highly influenced by carving stems in those classes because you're like oh it doesn't have to be all like sketched out like I do with my architectural stuff right and the mm -hmm. other thing that I think that's so important too, as a teacher to go back to um, doing your own, going to classes is you need to know how it is to be a student. Like, yes. I think it's like really humbling and very good to, um, to know how it is to learn something that you might have never done before. Or, you know, I think it's like very important to have this experience um, that reminds you and puts you back in those shoes of like how it could be, you know, if you're learning something, maybe you're like, like I did this, um, which is in my next question. I did this class. I haven't really, uh, I have to get back to it, but I started doing like this geometric pattern um, class where you, you know, it's very mathematical and you have to be like really precise. Not, not so much my thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got to be precise. Otherwise, it doesn't work out with the whole geometric shapes and stuff, you know? <laughs> but like, how do you overcome this, right? Like, how do you overcome those struggles? And that's great. So um, what's the last class that you have taken? Um, the last class I took, it was about a couple of weeks ago um, by Kit Davey. Mm -hmm. um she I don't know I found her on Instagram and she's been teaching all these different um structures like book binding structures and she had what is called an interlocking accordion book and I was like how did she do that so you know look because you know sometimes as a book artist we'll look at something or even a printmaker you, you look at something and you can deconstruct how it was done and then go off on your day well, this time I was like, how did she do this? I must know this. I must know this. <laughs> Register, <laughs> sign up. And yes, this is this is actually, I have it right here. This is the book. It's cool. inter, interlocked. Nice. Two pieces of paper that are that are interlocked. And I was just like totally fascinated. Wow. Just just amazing. But I mean, it's very simple. No glue is required, but um, it's the way that she taught it that was amazing and it was approachable. And I wanna be able to apply some of those like that approachable like things. I feel like to me, book binding is really hard to teach online, but she made it easy, you know? So like, how can I do that for other students and stop being so scared to teach book binding? Right. Yeah. So Shelly is asking what's today's class about. Um, Shelly, I don't know if you have joined us before, 
we are actually never really teaching classes here. Uh, these are conversations that Sarah and I have. And in this episode, we're talking about back to school and why learning as a teacher and learning in general is, uh, is important. And we both had a request to each other uh, just for fun, like a short little thing that we want to teach each other. Uh, you can also watch a recording later, but um, I, I'm sorry if I disappoint you, this is not a real class class. If I disappoint anyone else, sorry about that. We will show some fun things, but it's not, it's mostly a conversation. That's what the Zoom cast is always about, right, Sarah? Yes, it's still good to learn. <laughs> We may not be making anything, but I mean, we are going to show some tips early uh, later, yes. but you can still learn something from our conversation. So hopefully yes. you will. We think so. Yes. So, um, which also I think is part of learning is like, uh, I don't think it's, it always has to be something that you do with your hand and you're learning that you also uh, might want to, you know, like I love to watch some shows where you learn something. And as many of our followers might know, right? We did this uh, thing, Sarah and I, where we watched the great Potter, <laughs> Potter oh <my> show. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, honestly, I was watching, I was binging it. And and then I'll, I'll be having a discussion with Natalie and I'm like on season three, something, something or another. And she was like, I'm still on season one. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't wait for you, <laughs> but it was so good. But there were so many things in that pottery class that I learned, I'm at class, but what they were doing, um, that I learned is like, if it's broken, you just deal with it. You keep moving. You figure out a way to, to, to create that final piece, regardless of what happens. And I found that like mesmerizing. Like I had to see the next one and see who won every episode. Yeah, I think like that's part of, um, so I'm, go I'm back to the gym after a very, very long hiatus. Um, and I'm like, I got to get my COVID pounds off too. And <laughs> so um, I'm back to the gym. And, and it's funny, anything I do, I always think about like, I don't know, it's probably how your mind sometimes go like, how this relates going to the gym, for example, to a gym class to making art or to teaching classes in art, right? Like, uh, you know, you're like, okay, I can't really do any push-ups. <laughs> like what's a push-up? But no, I'm just kidding. But like, no, it's true. But uh, you know, like you you have to do it a couple of times before you actually are there. It's not like you're going to the gym and then boom, you're you're like as cool as the other 19 people in the gym, right? So so I think that it's so cool, like this, uh, how you overcome like the hurdle and you're like, okay, I'm going there. And I'm like, wow, I'm always thinking about how I relate that to art making. So whatever I do, I always, I don't know, I always think about like how this relates or music, you go to a gem session and you're seeing how musicians are um, especially like jazz, how they're, um, you know, talk to each other nonverbal and then give each other turns. And it's like so interesting. And I always think about how I can relate that to uh, what I do. And I think it's so uh, important to do something, sometimes even like totally out of your league or totally different from what you do, uh, like watching pottery stuff. <laughs> I would never have done it if you didn't, if you didn't recommend it. Like, yeah, I was like, you got to watch this. And then I was like hooked after the first episode. Just... Yeah, definitely. I think we saw, said it in every episode, but I definitely say like you, that's a show that's like really, really cool. And also to learn something about like uh, how many times you do something that costs you a ton of effort and uh, time and then and then it might like not really work out or be kaput and you're like okay that was is uh it's called uh is it the great yeah, pottery, the great show, pottery show yeah the great pottery show it's on uh netflix as far as i know no, i no. thought it's hbo max it's on hbo, HBO max thank you Sarah. <laughs> sorry about that linda 
Um, so it's one of those like British shows that um, are in this like baking and sewing um, stuff. So another question before we do um, our stuff is um, we were talking about retreats and meaning with retreats. I mean, there's different kinds of retreats, right? You can, uh, I mean, pre-pandemic and hopefully soon about, oh, the great pottery throwdown. Thank you. Kim. That's it. <laughs> Oh my God. We, don't, we never know the name of it, but we do know we've we seen all the episodes. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. We we always like just forwarded the intro, like let's get down to it now. <laughs> to the throwdown. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so but bad. like so there are these retreats that are ho hopefully coming back, like going to um where teacher like several teachers are teaching a new book like workshops and stuff but we were also talking about like how it is if you as friends um as artist friends are just like and i did that once i just checked it was last time in 2014 which is really really sad but uh, i birgit copson uh, julie five from Balzer and jen mason and i we rented uh a place after convention and we were all teaching we actually made a we rented a house in california and we actually had a hashtag for it it was like two days uh 15 bags because that's how we rolled in there the four of us but we rented a house for a couple of days and we um and we are um you know we were doing art there so together uh, we did a round robin with our art journal while we were there, but we were also doing our own stuff. And then we also just talked uh, and did a lot of like relaxing, swimming, uh, lots of eating, lots of eating was involved, but it was so cool. And I really, really want to do that again. What's your thought on retreat, Sarah? I haven't done like a, you know, physical in-person type of retreat. But what I think about, and I know it's just like, I don't, I don't want this to sound like I'm trying to sell anything and that's not the case, but I did the Carb December. I did Creative Jump, Jumpstart. I'm out there the, the Wanderlust 2020-22. Um, even though I'm a guest artist, I do sign up and I actually take all the classes <laughs> along with everyone else. And you know, sometimes people think, oh, because you're a great artist, you, you know, you don't need to learn. I learned so much, <laughs> even with the Carve December one, we were all printmakers, we all carved stamps, but we all did it differently. And I took a piece of something that they said with me, you know, you know, even um, with Creative Jumpstart, like I'm not necessarily a quote unquote mixed media artist, but I, you know, I learned to use paint. <laughs> like I would never use paint before, but I pushed myself to do something that I had never done. And then because we, you know, on this lockdown or this, this quarantine, this, this pandemic thing, I've had the opportunity to, you know, have my retreat at my desk. So I would wake up in the morning, watch a video and then absorb whatever that teacher is, is telling me. And then I do the thing. Right. So I'm grateful for that. And I even have like my two art friends that I meet with every week. It may not be a retreat, but we meet on Zoom from our computers and we make things every week. And it's so cathartic. It's so life changing. We bounce ideas off each other. We help each other be better. And so I encourage you to find that group, that retreat to get you back. I love this better. idea of um, doing that on Zoom too. Um, and if you are lucky and have someone close by, I mean, I know with the pandemic, it's always like a little bit uh, iffier, but um, as I said earlier, like going and having this play date with Kim is like, I don't know, We it's not like we're doing some of the things are complicated and we thought they were easy when we picked them. But most of the times I just, I just love that hanging, hanging out with uh, Kim and, you know, we're pre-planning and we have the stuff and then we do it and it's just always so fun. And then we have lunch usually 
uh, afterwards. So if you can't do it in person, I love this idea that Sarah said, find some people and make art with um, people or art and craft, whatever floats your boat and yeah. do that on Zoom. I think that's such a great idea. Um, very cool. So we asked each other, uh, like if we would go back, if we would be on a mini retreat, the two of us, which we will at some point, we yeah, we're, doing yeah. we're doing this, we're doing this. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. Although I will tie down my letterpress. You're not getting it. <laughs> uh, who knows? I might bring my U-Haul truck, you know. But we asked each other, like, what would you want to learn? Like, what would be like a, a short thing that uh, you want to learn from the other person? So Sarah, who wants to, you want to start with uh, like what you want to show? So yeah. I said to Sarah, I'm not a big, I carve stems, but I am struggling with uh, carving um, swoopy letters and swoopy, you know, numbers, like everything that's like kind of like very, and I wanted to know if she has some tips and tricks she can tell us, um, uh, well, selfishly that she can tell me and then <laughs> <laughs> like how to best approach it. Let me make that video uh, spotlight. So that's um, there. Uh, give me a second spotlight for everyone. So. There we go. Okay, you can see, see everything. It. Okay, great. So I'm going to, this is a piece I'm gonna use. This, so I'm going to just mark on my paper the size of the stamp. And this is really um, scrap. <laughs> I actually collect <laughs> all my scraps in a bag. <laughs> so nothing goes to waste. All right, so I'm gonna cut this out. We're gonna do, probably let's do eight. That's a nice swoopy number, right? Yeah, that's very swoopy. So I'm just doing with the marker so that way it's just nice and thick. The shape I want. Then I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna just shade. Is this a soft pencil? Yes, this is um, a Blackwing 223 pencil. Um, I like it because it's like almost like a 1B. Mm -hmm. And so when I transfer the image onto the block, um, it, it, you can see it, it's more visible. All right, so now that I've gotten my eight, I'm just gonna turn it over onto the block and transfer it. You could use a bone folder instead, you know, your fingernail, whatever, but that's the transferred image. And I'm gonna start with my smallest V gouge. And, and I just follow, like when you're, tra you remember when you were in grade school, you used to like trace your image and then color inside. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just trace it with my smallest tool. And I use my non-dominant hand to turn mm -hmm. and then keep my um, carving hand the same direction. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna turn. So it's basically like when you cut out a fuzzy stuff that you are moving the paper, not the scissors. You're moving Correct. the carving block, right? Moving the carving block, but the other hand. Interesting. That's it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the insides, just follow. And really not, sometimes I don't even move, depending on how sharp my tools are, I don't even move my, my carving tool. I just move my other hand. Huh. 
see that, uh huh, this like kind of little light bulb, like, huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Ah. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna do my biggest tool because now I'm just, I've already traced it. So I don't have to worry about making any nicks because it's already cut. So I'm just mm -hmm. gonna follow, 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 follow. A lot of people ask me like, how come you don't use the speedball tools? It's because I change tools often, you know, like I switch out. So I don't like having to like take it apart, put it back together. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful tools. Don't get me wrong. I just am impatient. <laughs> yeah, I actually have probably not the same company, but I have um, wooden carving tools like you have mm -hmm. because I'm like, mm, ain't no time for that yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good for like teaching a class, somebody who's like new at it, you know, it's good. But um, I highly suggest you, if you can, go to the the craft or art store and try it out in your hand like bring a piece of rubber and try it out and see how it feels because i mean i've tried them all and these are the ones that i it's the um it's the fail swiss made are my favorite tools all right so my last and final thing is I just cut it out with the exacto knife. That's it. That's how you just clean it up with the exacto knife at the end, and you have a stamp. I love I love that. So it's basically like if you you you're you're guiding, um, you're turning the the stem, not the mm -hmm. cutting tool. That is yes. Sick because that's what causes the mistakes. Yeah. You know, you don't get a smooth um, cut when you do it that way, the other way. And that's something that I learned just by, you know, when we did like the, when I, we did Carve December and all, this was like before last year, but, you know, just doing the very action of carving every day, I started doing that just, out of just how I was feeling. I'm like, I'm just gonna turn my other hand because I found that my wrists were tired or sore mm -hmm. because I kept trying to follow doing like this. Whereas if I, you know, turn the other back with the other hand, it's much more easier. So right. do you feel like when you don't carve for a while that you're having to kind of get yourself back in the groove and practice or are you so no, I feel like it's like it's like riding a bike um mm -hmm. I, I feel but sometimes I just grab you know like I said my bag of you know <laughs> rubber and just go for it you know what I mean mm -hmm. play around and, and see but there you go swoopy eight man I love that thing. Very, <laughs> very <easy>. cool. <laughs> I like that a lot. Now I'm like, I, I want to cough some swoopy stuff. Yeah, Whatever just try. Well, I just noticed that there's like a little noise right here. So I just took my tool and just did the same thing. Just curve, turn it, turn the block, and there you go. It's It's gone now. Cool. All right, it's your turn. Wow. So you said to me, <clears throat> let me get this out. Let me get, ah, wait, remove spotlight. You can see, you can tell that we are like, oh my God, technical stuff. <laughs> Let's get to the making. I, I'd rather do the making. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, let me see. Where am I here? Can you guys see this? I hope when I put the spotlight on there, I guess. So Sarah asked me, you said you want to have me do something with colors. Yes. Why? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, 
Wait, where is the spotlight here? Okay. So you said you're you're not doing a lot with co color, which is actually not true. But anyway, so I am doing a lot with color, but I wanted you to talk about like um, secondary colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I do an exercise sometimes in some of my um, classes, and I had to prepare it a little bit. But it's like you basically we're gonna do a very easy. Uh, color wheel so it's like yellow um, blue and red but then we have just the secondary colors orange green and violet uh, which can be mixed with the one with the ones that are always uh, adjacent from us is that what you say yes. I guess so. yes 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 English you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> exactly what um, I wanted now go ahead Right. So what I'd like to do is I keep in mind like the exercise that and you can do that when you're at home later uh, yourself, because and I would actually say you should. Um, you should say, um, you know, I'm going to take a magazine or something that I have at home. You could even use your paint uh, material and just, you know, use your paints and say, I'm going to. I'm going to find yellow, green, blue, violet, red, and orange. And you're, you're tearing it out and I prepared some little boxes. You can just put them on a pile, but you're not really like trying to put them next to each other. So I go through that and I say, oh, here's a violet, right? And I'm going to go into my uh, ca um, catalog here and I'm just going to rip out a little piece that says violet to me and I'm not really you know um looking further into that and put that into my violet um pile and then uh, I guess this is the fall catalog but yes, if I look at this, tone. right <laughs> this is like a little bit red so I could be like okay this is a red this is red to me so I'm ripping out I'm not really making more judgments oops than that can be bigger. This is a is a not a very good um, you know <laughs> catalog actually to use because the images are small. But like if you have a magazine image, like I would rip this out for an orange, right? And I'm just like ripping out until I have several different. Um, this is like a blue. If I look at it right now, um, several different pieces of the color until I have like, I don't know, 10 or whatever of yellow, green, whatever I uh, set there. And the reason why we're doing it or why I like to do that is to explain how colors are um, relative, relative to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you start like looking them isolated and alone, you're like, oh, that's a green, that's a yellow, that's, you know, this color. But then what happens if you start like putting them out? So here is my pile of red that I did earlier. And now mind you, we all see colors a little bit different too. And we also um, have different monitors and calibrations. So it's a little bit tough, right? So this is all the colors that I put out for red. And when I now start to look at those and I want to put them into red, right? I'm kind of like looking at it and I'm like, wow, actually these ones here, this one here that I saw clearly as a red when I pulled it out, I would now put that more into an orange, right? Same with this one. This is a little bit on the edge. I don't know how you guys see it on the camera. Like you might see it in a different way. But this one looks more orangey than actually red, right? Yeah. This one is like red, but this one looks almost like it's almost like a violet, but it's still more red. How do you see it? Yeah, it looks more red. And I feel like the other one that's underneath looks more violet to me from the, yeah. That's funny. Mm. This one, if I look at this, and again, the light is a little bit different here too. I would be like, hmm, I see it more, almost like more like, yeah, you're right, but it's more red to me than violet. Yeah, like right in between. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's pull out, 
the um, pieces that I had pulled out for orange uh, before and then put them in there. And I'm like, oh, this doesn't look that orange at all <laughs> anymore. It's actually a little bit more yellow to me. This one is a good orange, I feel, right? Mm -hmm. So you start like shifting things and you're realizing how, um, how much yellow is, for example, in here. Or if you're going with the red and you say this looks more violet, there's a blue component in there, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think that's very important because when you are judging colors, here is the greens that I pulled out. And if you're judging colors and you put them, I don't know how this was a green at all when I pulled it out. Very interesting. I'm like, mm. <laughs> this is too complicated for me. But you're like, okay, uh, you know, there's something happening. This is definitely more, more towards yellow for me. Um, and you realize that colors are like standalone or in comparison with other colors, it's different. They become different colors for you. They could go into a different category all of a sudden. And I find this is a very, like if you're like, okay, I'm gonna, um, you know, just concentrate on that. Is that a yellow or is that more an orange? Mm -hmm. this, is more, this was a yellow for me when I saw it. Now it's actually more green for me. Mm -hmm. Right? So it makes you aware. This is definitely a violet as I see it. But it makes you aware of how important it is to see colors in connection with other colors in order to really make a decision here. And when you have uh, different colors that you're mixing, um, because like every company, every acrylic uh, paint company, for example, has their uh, primary red, blue, and yellow. They usually don't say primary. Um, some of the craft paints say that, they say primary red, primary blue that's like the purest form basically of that color um some of the other acrylic paint companies have like uh i think um for liquitex it's like something like um phalo blue with green shade like i wouldn't know that's their pure uh blue right mm -hmm. but it means that if you mix it with another uh, primary color that's like the purest kind of color that you can get when you're mixing it and if you have colors that have a very uh, big like say you're mixing a red that is basically more into orange and then you would mix it with um, with blue because you want to get an, uh, a violet that's not really gonna work. It's gonna turn out a little bit more brownish because the colors that are um, opposite of each other on the color wheel, these are com um, complementary uh, colors. And when you mix them, you get neutral or muddy colors. And if you have a red that's already has, is more towards orange because it has a lot of yellow in there, and you mix it with a blue, you won't have, you will have a hard time to mix it to become uh, violet um, because those two are competing uh, with each other, those elements, because there's yellow in there. So sometimes people have a hard time to kind of like decide when they mix paints or grab paints out why they can't mix it and they're getting frustrated. And the answer is it's not you you just need to see what is, um, what's your color really leaning more towards it and just grabbing it and saying, this is red, doesn't really help. You have to put it next to other colors uh, to kind of define, unless you're, there are charts of course, for every company that says, 
you know, there's more yellow or red, or sometimes you see it on the label, but it helps like to really put them next to each other and decide, is this actually more an orange, uh, orange red, or is this more a violet red, or is that more like a purer red, uh, to make decisions how you mix um, colors. So that's my lesson. I hope it helped a little bit to understand that colors are relative. I almost like watching you do this. I want, this is what I want to do. I want to get all my paints out and I want to like mix each one and have a palette, not a palette, but a, an actual square of what it looks like. You know what I mean? Because I think when they're in the tube, you can't really see what it really is. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I think that's so important. Like every time I get new paints, um, I, uh, I make color swatches and I also start um, mixing colors. So um, that's really important for me that you really, really understand what this color leans towards. Um, and, you know, yeah, you can sometimes see it on the packaging, like, Mm -hmm. it, you will see that there is like more yellow in it or whatever. Um, but it really helps more if you basically do it yourself, do the work once you got it. Um, I see Marsha said, I have a swatch for all my, uh, my paints. It helps a lot, exactly. Uh, color swatching. And then Ann Lou says, um, I once taught a class on color where the students were to bring something red. Everyone brought a different color red. Yes, that's also a very good exercise. It's also um, where you say everyone without looking at a Coke bottle or can uh, go into a magazine and find not the ad, of course, then it's the pure one, but to, like find the red that you think is the Coca-Cola red. It's like such a significant red and then you will put it all together and you will see it's all different. Tina says, I'm so impatient, color swapping is hard, uh, swatching is hard, but I'm just doing it with my markers. Mm -hmm. It's fun, I like it. It's a very med meditative and um, Zen-like uh, thing for me. But as you know, like I, I just recently started getting to use paints so this is important to me to figure out you know how to mix them because I you know don't know how to do that you know properly <laughs> I mean I do it with printmaking yes but I feel like painting is a little different like how do you know this was very helpful thank you cool I, I'm glad it was I <laughs> you never know like you're like <laughs> But it's such an easy way, right? Um, Nicola yeah. says, I have expensive coloring pens and they all have charts for you to color so you can see what they look like. Yeah, and it, like, it's really important. I keep a record and Lou says, of all my colors, whatever the medium. That's, that's really cool. Um, yeah, that's what I do with the playing. So I guess it's like, how do you, how do you go about when you get like, for example, you said you would do uh, new um, carving tools, a lot of new carving tools, right? Mm -hmm. Do you then test them out on a test drive too and, and see how they react in comparison to the other carving tools that you have? That is true, yes. Same thing, right? Yeah. That's what, you, what I do when I get new colors. Like, do they behave the same? <laughs> No, they don't. And even sometimes the brands don't behave the same. The different brands or like, I know like the golden, like fluid acrylics are different from the, 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 the heavy medium acrylics. Like they don't work the same. So, yeah. Um, Tina said she, she asked a question um, there. Uh, Kim answered that. She, she uh, let you know, you can find the, previous episodes on Sarah's uh, YouTube channel uh, or on my website, um, they're in there. Uh, and Lou said also, I test all my carving uh, tools. So let us know if you have any questions or what you, um, you know, what are your thoughts on art retreats? How do you have any questions about that? Um, so 
no worries, Tina. <laughs> she said I missed it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> follow, follow, um, follow Sarah on YouTube too. Um, she uploads just like I do also all the videos there. But also um, Sarah does a ton of videos every Friday. She posts okay. a new uh, video and they're really cool and very um, informative as well. Thank you. Um, yes, so I yeah, that was fun. So I was about to say, um, I'm nearing a hundred videos. Wow. So I'm going to do something special. We'll talk about it. It won't be till next month, but like, you know, if you want to join me on the video, that would be awesome. <laughs> All my art friends, um, just to uh, share, you know, how these have inspired you. Because I, sometimes I don't know how, how things are going, but yeah, it'd be nice. I love your videos. They're always like super fun. And um, it's so funny for me that you're, not funny but like you're having like you're so good with colors too and layering colors it's like intuitively um very amazing um and lou asked sarah do you sharpen your tools or just replace them oh yeah i sharpen them i have this um tool i think it's by flex cut so mm -hmm. you just place it on the because that's like some of them are like triangle shaped some of them are the u-shaped and you just lay it across and you just sharpen. Or you can use the Japanese stone where you, you know, put it in water and you just grind it and sharpen it. But I sharpen. Don't throw them away. I sharpen. <laughs> That's a really cool sharpener. I've never seen that one. Yeah, by Flex Cut. Flex Cut. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, making a note. <laughs> Flex Cut. Flex cut in my shopping cart soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the other thing that the other thing that happens when you're taking a class or you're collaborating with someone is like, where did you get that? Yep. I'm gonna have this thing. <laughs> Add to cart. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> like why not like anything enabling? But I also think always like when I see uh, you know, I've been doing Creative Jumpstart coming up the 11th year. So I've seen, I don't know, 500 videos or more, right, from other teachers that I have in my, um, in my rotation. And every time I see something, I'm, I, I've, I'm always blown away. But it's funny because there are, you know, repetitive things, of course, just because that's the nature uh, in techniques, for example, or how someone, like, let's say a transfer, right? I have seen so many transfer videos and I have done 5,000 transfers and I've taught transfers, but every time someone does it, there's something that I learn. There's like, you know, everyone has a different approach or different um, explanation or tools that they use. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I oh. must have this. <laughs> and the thing is, I use the tools. They don't sit there and collect us. I use them, you know? So it's just like you're adding more tools to your toolbox so you can go out and do more things. And I feel like I get faster because of all the, the learnings that I am, you know, gathering. So I think it's, again, just important. And then sometimes you get inspiration from places that don't necessarily do what you do like yeah so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put in this um in the in the chat so there's this um lady she goes by my froggy stuff and basically she's like a doll collector and she shows you like how to dress your dolls and all this stuff usually my kids watch this but then she takes it to another level where she creates the house and all the things inside it. And she does it with her own hands, with glue, with, with board. And you're like, what? <laughs> she took that pile of stuff from the dollar store and made a house out of it, right? And so that to me was so inspiring. Even though my kids were watching it, I was over there, over their shoulder, just like, 
eating it all up because I'm like, I must have all the things that she's using because she's amazing, right? So check her out. And then there's another one, um, D DIY Danny. So she does more like construction. So like building shelves and, and furniture and that kind of stuff. But one day she like spray painted tiles <laughs> and I was, I was watching, I was like, oh my gosh, I could print on tiles. I could definitely do it. So I follow all her steps to the point where she starts to spray paint. I can literally print on tiles and then seal it with all the things that she put in there. So I'm going to Home Depot and get that stuff done for my bathrooms downstairs. When that, when that, when it, when it's all together, I'll make sure I do a video of it all. But yeah, that got me like excited about what I could do with printing, not just paper, uh, but tiles. Yes, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna put um, a link in here too that reminded me while you were talking about that. Um, it's on Instagram, City Fork um, Studio. Um, very grungy, um, you know, stuff, but the, mostly like stuff from cities, miniature, like miniature stuff, and the way how they use like the funniest like things. Uh, that can be like a brick house or townhouse and you're like oh use the cap of a sharpie you know yeah it's like it's just so cool um to see that and it's very inspiring too um like how to make textures and um here's for example um uh nomwar tea parlor that i have been in chinatown for you know uh, lunch a couple of times and I'm like I can't believe you just made this a miniature it's like the best thing in the <laughs> world you know like, and then you see the pictures how like how they uh, sometimes what what was used and it's just like so cool here's a letter it's like how is this not a real letter and it's like up to the paint specs you know like just amazing so all I guess to say that looking at other things can be super inspiring and you can learn something as well, right? Yeah. Well, and I'm also going to put the link to Kit Davy, the, the class that I took. Oh, yeah, uh, cool. Yeah. So that way you can go check her out too. Very cool. That was fun. <laughs> I need to cop stamps now. Oh, yeah, you could do it. I'm going to do letters and swoopy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like usually everything I cop is kind of boxy. But yeah, it's just, you know, hand-eye coordination. You just turn one and then carve it with the other. Very cool. I hope to, you guys enjoyed it. Um, we want to tell you what we're going to do for our next episode. Um Next one is October 5th at noon. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be Get Your Ink On. Yes. Get Your Ink um, On. Uh, get, get Your, your ink, ink On. on. Get Your you Ink On. <laughs> <laughs> it's like white girl overbite. <laughs> <sighs> and it's uh, October is a popular month for creative challenges and many seem to be focused on the art of printmaking think inktober and printtober sarah nat that's us thought it might be fun for art collab episode eight to do a little show and tell and share um their personal favorite basic printing techniques nat will share some ways to use a jelly plate for printmaking and sarah will demonstrate how to use an art foamy stamp buddy to produce multicolored layered prints. Join the Zoomcast for some inspiring tips and tricks that you can apply to your own art making and participate in the chat discussion and the question and answers to have your questions answered live. So yes. again, another one where we demonstrate a little bit more, uh, but you also get our chatty, chatty, chatty selves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and a lot of giggling and smiling. Exactly. <laughs> and look what I got in the mail. Oh, she got my little, oh, she got my art for me. Yes, I did. I got four of them. 
Oh, you're the best. I can't wait to see what you do with them. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about the, the hydrant. And also, you know, our Lady Liberty. Yes. I know. <laughs> I thought also too, even though it's episode seven, it's also t- September 7th. Did you, did you, did we realize that was? No, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Oh, so we should do October 8th instead of. <laughs> no, 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 we're fine. Tuesdays are, Tuesdays are good. You know, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we got, we got to streamline this because I always were like, oh my God, when was it? <laughs> Uh, any questions before we go? They're like, no. <laughs> we got everything we needed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed us and you come back to our next episode, Art Collab. Yes. With Sarah and Nat. Nat and Sarah. Well, now you have a jingle, <laughs> which I have to put in there. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See you next month.